Hey, Patricia, uh, everyone has the microphone rights. If you want to click on the microphone icon at the top of the screen, you can turn your mic on. And then uh, since we have mics on for everyone, it would be good if people mute their mics when they're not using it. So uh, what trouble are you having, Patrizia? Uh, Skype may still have control of your microphone, but you should are you are you hearing everyone and and viewing the the screen? Well, thanks I'm driving you crazy. Okay. Hi, everyone. I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, good. Hi. Hi, everyone. This is this is Beth from Pace. Keith, do you think we're ready to begin? Hi, Beth. Hi. Uh, yeah, except... Uh, Patrizia is having some problem with her microphone, and she's going to be presenting uh, for the faculty support. Uh, okay, I'm I'm sorry, I was misunderstanding that. So please go ahead and uh, let's let's help her first. That's that's fine. Let's, uh, I think she logged out and is going to log back in again. <clears throat> Uh, Beth, while we're waiting, did you want to talk about ABLE or uh, the slides that um, you submitted um, this week while we're waiting for Patricia? Okay. Sure, that sounds great. Um, hi, everyone. This is Beth. Is that, I don't know if that's someone else trying to talk, but um, I'm from Pace University and here with my colleagues, Linda and Sam. Hi. Hi. And uh, we're happy to meet with you all again. This is such a great group. We're so, um, we're enjoying this so much, this mug group. And, you know, it's, it's kind of informal and always, always fun to see who comes to the meetings. And it's so neat to see. We have, I think, 152 muggers in our Facebook group. And we find it a really fascinating read, a great place to check for quick questions and see what's going on in the community. So, um, thank you all for your participation in that. And in looking forward, we'd um, we'd like to start planning. I know this is our last agenda item, but um, so we can mention it now that we'd like to start planning for the ABLE conference, which, as many of you know, is our the international conference that's held each year in Boston. And we had a meet up last year during lunch, and um, we'd like to try to facilitate something similar. Lunch was good, but. I don't think it gave us quite enough time to talk as a group.
So um, in talking to Christina and a few others, we thought that it might be a good idea to try to put in a session again this year. We had presented as a group two years ago. And um, in talking to Trent Batson, he suggested that perhaps we submit a session that's maybe a little bit longer and maybe would be a half presentation and kind of half open meeting, which might serve our needs well. We could present again as a panel. And uh, we could share, I mean, it would be great to have as many of you join live, but we understand the travel distance. And if some of you couldn't be part of it live, perhaps you could share information with us. <laughs> Samples, you know, we'd, we'd love to have MUG represented as fully as we can. So I'm sure we could get creative with that, too. We, we haven't seen a call for proposals yet, which is strange. Usually by now we have it, but when we do see the call for proposals come out, we can start a conversation up in Facebook and with, with each other and, and just see what the ideas are. But if anyone has any ideas here, if you want to chime in or post in the chat, we're thinking about it. Oh, I see Christina posted the annual conference information, which is great. But it's a really great conference. It's a great time for us to get together and share ideas about Bahar and ePortfolio and to help each other. Oh, great. Hi, Gail. <laughs> yeah, it's nice Hi. to see you here. Um, I didn't notice that you had joined us. Yeah, we'd love to do something with you at Pratt. Um, we feel like we started our Mahara use with some of your colleagues from Pratt, and it'd be great to continue that. So let's let's talk more about that. Um, again, what we what we did two years ago for those of you who weren't part of that is we we had a panel presentation of a few schools that have been part of this mug group, and each of us kind of gave an update about where we are, and then also talked a little bit about what the mug group has has uh, done for us. And so we could do something similar or different, um, but I think some way to give us a chance to present, but also um, just just chat openly with people at the conference about Mahara and sharing ideas around ePortfolio use through Mahara would be great. Mm -hmm. Other comments about that? Okay. Um, I don't know if Patricia is is ready with the microphone. Looks like George is typing. Yeah, I figured that was his answer. If they're not ready, we do have another topic uh, that we can talk about. But now? oh, can you hear anything from us now? This is I'm trying to help Patricia. Yes, we can. We can hear you. It's a little bit Thank faint, you. but is this George? Can Can you hear me? This is George. Oh, yes. Am, am I coming across OK? You're coming across great. Oh, good. Uh, maybe uh, I'll just start a little introduction. I, it sounds as though Larry and, uh, and Ivo have gotten Patrizia on. Uh, Patrizia uh, Manyi, actually, um, let me just introduce her. She got her doctorate at, at Teachers College some years ago. Um, before that, she she's a native Italian, and she's taught just about in every way you can imagine. Uh, in Italy and, and in this country, too. Oh, uh, we can hear, hear you. <laughs> so, um, um, it's going to be echo. Actually, I can hear. Is that Patrizia? Yeah, that's me. Sorry. Oh, good. OK. So, Patrizia, anyway, um, got her doctorate at TC and basically in linguistics, um, teaching, learning how to use can, uh, technology for teaching languages. Um, and. After her doctorate, she went back to Italy um, and ran some computer labs and taught more. And then we brought her back. I brought her back to the college because she's really our expert with respect to using technology and, and really the pedagogy of using technology in, in uh, teaching and learning. So this expertise is really a valuable one for us. She actually teaches. She practices what you know her theory. She's the, really the best uh, teacher I've, I've, I've ever experienced. Um, one of the wonderful things that, that happened for us um, around the year 2000 was that the college was up for its regular NCATE reaccreditation process. So as part of that, um, some electronic portfolio functionality was was really, um, if not required, was really you know uh, encouraged. So we began an initiative to 
develop an ePortfolio system at the college, and we used live text at that time. But really, to use it well, we realized that we had to train our faculty um, and you know get them really comfortable in how to use it. Unfortunately, the college, the mission, the reason the college was doing this was to come up with um, accreditation data to present to NCATE. So not only did we have to worry about the ePortfolio, um, uh, you know, the development of portfolios by the students, but we had to worry about aggregating assessment data from a part, from departments, from individuals to departments, actually from pro individuals to programs to departments all the way up to the institutional level. So it was a huge uh, challenge. And the, the pe working with the faculty was really the, you know, the critical piece of this. So at that time, Patrizia actually uh, took, took the effort on to develop a group of graduate students. You know, of course, Teachers College is a graduate institution, but to, to develop a cohort of, of students who could really go out and work one-on-one -on -one with faculty. And in fact, in many cases, gave workshops for the students as well to get them comfortable with using, using the technology. So this, um, this initial effort then um, became, it grew, to, it actually was funded by our Preparing Teachers to Use Technology, our PT3 grant, which went on for four more years or so after that uh, effort. And um, after the PT3 grant ended, we, we were able to keep the Tech Fellow program alive for a little while, but only in a very reduced form. And, and just recently, I guess in 2010, we were able to get funding, um, Central funding from the institution to really start to build it up again. Patrizia, by this time, had learned significantly um, what it was successful, what really made the program work well, and what where the barriers were, because there were substantial barriers, particularly with um, trying to work with all the assessment data and encourage faculty to use it when it, it didn't seem pedagogically exciting uh, to them, and, and the students as well. They really didn't see any reason to be doing uh, these e-portfolios was just additional work. So this connection with the with the these these graduate students, and in fact, they it was designed such that students were assigned to departments that they were enrolled in. So not only did they have technical expertise, they had content expertise. So they could really talk the language of their particular um, instructors. So Patricia, really, uh, I, I can't tell you how amazed I am at this uh, program that she created. I think it's, it's, it's fairly unique. And it's one in which she's developed this cohort of autonomous learners. I mean, they really, uh, and I sit in the background, I see the emails bouncing back and forth when faculty ask a question and the, and, the, and the fellows all bing, 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 you know, back and forth come up with solutions. And then, and then not only that, develop communication to um, you know, to the faculty and all, and all the other tech fellows uh, to to demonstrate what what really has worked. So maybe without further ado, I should give it over to Patricia instead of doing her, her whole presentation here. Thank you. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay, I'm going to mute uh, my uh, speakers because I'm sorry. I mean, I tested the system a hundred times, and of course, I have this bad karma. Technology always breaks on me. Anyway, so if you can all hear me, I will just briefly, well, George has already introduced myself, so I will briefly describe the Tech Fellow program. So if you have any questions in the end, uh, oh, feel free to interrupt me, although I won't hear you, so. <laughs> OK. Uh, so I'll go ahead, right? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, please. OK. Um, as George said, uh, we went through different incarnations of the Tech Fellow program. And what it is like today, we have a cohort of 12 Tech Fellows, uh, one coordinator, and they're covering 10 departments. Uh, and their aim is, the, the goal is to support faculty with technology and their pedagogy. So it's not just ePortfolios, Mahara, but it's all, this, all, all the tools that we are supporting at Teachers College, so Moodle, Google Apps, Alfresco, Adobe Connect, Second Life, Qualtrics, and the Smart Board. So they, they have a wider scope. They work for 17 hours a week. Uh, they have a stipend per semester, and they also get three credits. They can only be re registered students. And what we'd like to have, if possible, is have at least two semesters 
uh, on board to a commitment of two semesters so that um, they they can be better trained and provide better support. The training, I'll talk briefly about it later on, is based on self-directed self-directed collaborative uh, model. model. Um, and I'll be able to talk about it later. Can I move to the next slide or you need to? If I click, what happens? Nothing. Okay, thank you. So the, the role of the tech fellow is to assist faculty one-on-one. -on -one. They can do it in, sev in several ways. They can go to their office in person, exchange email, use the phone, use chat. We have Google Chat. Sometimes they work on a document and they just, uh, they use Adobe Connect and they use it better than I do. <laughs> They're pretty good and pretty savvy. They can set up a web conference and, and, and assist faculty. Um, tech fellows also run the orientation sessions. We just had one now. We had Moodle orientation, or we can have Mahara orientation. And they do it for faculty. And sometimes if faculty wants to uh, have their students be exposed, they go to their courses and uh, offer a, a orientation. Uh, they test new tools and upgraded of new tools. Um, they also produce help documentation. It can be online, offline, handouts, whatever, and then we share. Uh, they also manage, we have a, a, a mailbox. The faculty doesn't know who the tech fellows are. They can write to this tech fellow help mailbox. So we share, we all have access to it, and we uh, provide prompt. Um, Help. And we have a Twitter. Anybody can follow us on Twitter. We have very few followers, I have to say, but we will insist. And also, when we have uh, faculty brown bag lunches or technology dialogues, we call them, and various other events, they present best practices. Um, yes. So can we can I, we go to the next slide? I'll show you the structure. Okay. This is, uh, I was trying to have a circular uh, image because I don't like pyramids. So each tech fellow is kind of acts as a liaison between their, their um, department and the departments are all around the circle. But they also collaborate within the circle. There's a coordinator that's an angel and there's a supervisor, me. I'm the dragon. I protect them from external attacks, but I am also shoot some fire when things don't go well. But th this works pretty uh, neatly. Um, and uh, what what they do is uh, okay. They uh, they have access to resources. ACS is Academic Computing. It's us. They. They have access to shared spaces. They have some, also some uh, test environments or uh, test classes in Moodle, and and in, in and they have meetings. Um, in the next slide, we'll show you the workflow of a tech fellows. Okay, what happens when a faculty member has a question? Okay, the uh, the faculty member contacts the tech fellow. The tech fellows provide the answer, and this is. Fine, but this is rare. The next um, slide will show you most probably what happens. The faculty member has a question. The tech fellow is not sure. So the tech fellow communicates with the tech fellow group. And this part is the most constructive and most uh, um, interesting, because they, they really exchange and learn a lot by communicate with each other. The Tech Fellow can also have a knowledge base, which is constructed by us all. So we have a website with all the question and possible answers and, uh, um, and contacts that they can direct faculty to, redirect faculty to, because sometimes the question does not just pertain uh, Moodle, Mahara, or those technologies, it pertains other things. So the Tech Fellows know and have the role to redirect. And at the end, when they return their answer to the faculty, they fill out a tech fellow assistance form where they keep record of what they've done. And we can get gather data and see what happens 
uh, in the process. Okay. Um, right. This is an example. Oh, we meet. Uh, we meet once a week, right? And three meetings a month are online, and one meeting usually face to face. The online meeting is the way you see. Uh, we have we're sharing an agenda. Uh, each um, each tech fellow. Uh, um, uh, okay, let me explain. Every week, a tech fellow is the host, so it's in charge of the meeting. So they're in also in charge of the agenda, and the agenda covers a lot of things. Um, yeah, I think the next, uh, next. Okay, the next. Yeah, show, show, shows you the, the the way the agenda works. Uh, there's a host and there's a scribe. The host has also uh, instructor privileges in Moodle if we have to to work with Moodle for, uh, and assigns homework for, for the other tech fellows. The agenda uh, covers a lot of things, useful links that we need to um, refer to. It has announcement, urgent deadlines. The issues of the week are rediscussed when they're solved so that everybody can participate and know what's going on. Uh, there are projects. We have uh, some projects. One is the website help project. Then we have a video project where the tech fellows create uh, videos, snippets, and, and, uh, and we talk about that. We have presentations. Each week, a tech fellow decides to present one topic. And it can be anything. It can be Mahara. It can be uh, an aspect of Moodle. And it presents to to, to the other tech fellows, and they get feedback. Feedback not only in terms of content, but in their presentation skills. So, and there is a there is an area about testing. Whenever we have to test uh, new tools, the tweet of the week gets discussed, and the action items. So we we know what we have to do in the future. Well, this is pretty pretty basic. Okay. So the training model. Am I going too fast? No, I can't hear you. Okay, <laughs> too slow. <laughs> okay, uh, the the model. Okay, communication is the key. So how do they communicate? They communicate through the group email. They also communicate chat. Sometimes uh, we are we, some tech fellows work at night, so we have this Google chat, and we just go back and forth, face to face. They meet each other. Uh, by phone, texting. I, I realize that now tech fellows use texting a lot, and also Skype. They sometimes they use uh, Skype to com to communicate with faculty and with each other. They have shared spaces, as I said. They have shared folders in Google Docs. We have an entire folder with subfolders in Google Docs where we have all spreadsheets, uh, forms, and all sorts of things that we need. It's pretty. Uh, Convoluted, and then uh, we have a tech fellow training website where all the information gets posted, and it's kind of um, uh, it, it, it just uh, it's a resource where they all go to, and they have three or four Moodle test courses. One is a sandbox where they just experiment. One is the the teacher training course where they act as students, and other courses they may use to show faculty, as example. The, their training is based on mentor and mentee. So the fellows who have more experience are mentors, and they make sure that the new fellow gets up to speed. We also have each each week, every uh, a tech fellow assigns uh, assumes the role of the instructor and and provides assignments, and we all have to do it, me included. Presentations are already talked to it, uh, and presentation gets assessed by the entire group. And there's a self-assessment key at the end of the semester to see how much they have uh, learned. Uh, the, I think the next slide shows you um, kind of a, OK, this is what a self-mentoring um, uh, chart looks for. The, the, it's only a little bit, but there's a, there are things that they need to know 
they make sure they co cover the topic. They make sure that the, the mentee has learned this series of things. And then the mentee has, has uh, his or her own chart, which is the next. The next chart, OK. And the mentee keeps track and says, I know this. I'm not very sure. This is what I need to do. So they keep track of, uh, of what they're learning. OK. Uh, OK. Uh, are you interested in knowing how they're recruited? Because the process is a little, uh, OK. Now, uh, the criteria for fellows, we want to have someone with technical abilities, knowledge of security policy, to have some sort of experience. The key is to have good interpersonal and communication skills. Because the techni technical part, they can learn. The, the schedule has to be flexible. Usually, good students are very busy all over, but we expect a kind of uh, flexibility. And they, um, they need to be available at least two semesters. Two semester. As I said before, we would like to have continuity. And the second semester is uh, what works best. If it's more, we're happier. They need to be comfortable when they work in a group. We we'd rather we would like to have problem solver, self-directed learners. Everybody says I'm a self-directed learner, but sometimes it's not true. They want me to tell them what to do, but we're working on it. Uh, the other important thing is that they need to respect deadlines, being reactable, uh, reliable, proactive, take the initiative, not afraid of making mistakes resolve conflicts, accept criticism, and able to cope with stress. We have, at the beginning of semester, it's very stress stressful. Uh, faculty ask for help. In three minutes, need that it, everything needs to be solved. So in order to, to see if we have a person that uh, can be a good tech fellow, uh, the process goes through, in the next slide, and I'm going to show you how we recruit them. OK, we first learned that we have to have a recommendation from the department. Ideally, we would like to have a tech fellow that, who is also a student in the department. Um, sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes it doesn't work. But we need to do it. We need to have faculty um, suggest uh, who would they like. Sometimes, and more often than not, they don't suggest the right person. Because usually, at teacher's college, uh, they more focused on research. So they recommend people who are good at research, but they have poor, poor uh, communication skills. So we have to find a balance with that. They go through a job application. And then the interview is fairly detailed. There's a questionnaire that focuses at the list of the criteria that I showed you before. Then after uh, submitting a questionnaire, um, they, they come and have a face-to-face -face interview or a Skype interview. Yes. Uh, can we go to the next? OK, this is an example of, they have a form, but this is an example of questions that uh, they go through. and. Uh, there are different scenarios, and depending on what they, uh, they answer, we'll be able to determine whether they're more suitable or not. Um, they're very good at this, so sometimes not even this will provide the right. <laughs> so next one is the challenges. OK, chal we have, we're facing challenges. We're facing a variety of challenges. Um, one is the f uh, reaching out faculty. We have a good number of adjuncts who are not around, and they're, they're teaching all over the city. So sometimes it's very hard. Email sometimes doesn't, doesn't work. So we're trying to do the best we can, but it's still a challenge. Uh, the second challenge is. By the time the tech fellows are ready to fly and they're wonderful, they leave. So there is a turnover. 
because they graduate or they move to a better job, I don't know, but there, we have this, and, um, and that's why we insist on two semesters, but it, it would be nicer to have them on board for a longer period. Um, the physical space, okay, the tech fellows are students, so they don't have a space where they can sit and have faculty join them. We're working on this, and George may say something about it, uh, on having a space, a physical space for training and support. Um, they, sometimes they use their own phone, which is not something that I like, but um, this would be a, a very great asset once we have it. And the faculty expectations is another challenge. We need to reach a balance. Tech fellows are not teaching assistants, but sometimes they're seen as teaching assistants. So um, uh, we, we, that they are supposed to empower faculty and make sure that the faculty will be independent. But sometimes the expectations are not um, not exactly. So will academic computing will clarify and and solve the issues. Uh, I'm, I think I'm done. If you have, now I'm going to turn on my speakers, otherwise it will echo. Uh, and if you have any questions. Yeah, good, uh, Patricia. Um, I see Roger is asking some questions about um, the number of people whom we support. Um, and actually, we, we have, it's kind of a challenge. We have, you know, 140 or so, 150 full-time faculty in the college, but we also have a, another 250 or 300 adjuncts. So it's difficult to reach those people. We you typically use email. Um, and if they're on campus, then the tech fellows can come and visit them. Uh, Patricia mentioned trying to have a physical space, and that's that's a real challenge. The college has been trying for a while to develop uh, some sort of learning center, um, but we don't we don't have that yet. We do have um, an on a hands-on computer classroom that has um, actually have three of those, and I think one of those we're going to convert into a a space beginning this semester where the tech fellows can have sort of a home um, and lay out in such a way that faculty can come and um, immediately get help with. Um, you know, with uh, a tech fellow sitting there who can actually work with them. Maybe sometimes better than if they're in the faculty member's office because there'll, there'll be resources there um, which can which can be presented. Um, I mentioned we do use these folks for classroom technology support and other things as well as just the online environment. So it's good to have those kinds of resources that we can um, train people in. For example, using um, presentation gateways now so that we can encourage faculty to have students in the classroom share their screens on the central projection unit. So that's something that will take some, some work. Um, I'm just curious, uh, too, for those folks who do have uh, E-Term or um, um, like the, the learning technologists and other, um, other kinds of uh, support like this, whether um, you know, how, how you guys, how they work with uh, faculty to sort of get them thinking about the, the pedagogy. In our, in our school, it's difficult because our faculty all think they're, the ped, you know, pedagogical experts. So they don't really think about learner-centered um, um, te technologies and ways to teach that are more learner-centric. And, and it's, uh, with e-portfolios in particular, as I say, we rolled, we rolled them out as, as more of an assessment system. And, and that was a mess. So I'm just wondering how, you know, using Mahara, how you get people thinking about um, ways to, you know, in, encourage the learners to reflect, encourage the faculty to get their learners to reflect. I don't know. Is that easy? <laughs> do you have ways that the fellows, that your folks work with faculty to, to do this kind of thing? So that's my question. <laughs> I just saw two questions, and I replied in the chat about the students. They are current students. We cannot uh, have graduate 
students who have great grades. They have to be enrolled in classes. And the three credits are given as tuition exemption. Um, they, they, this is graduate school, so but they have to be current students. Uh, Yeah. Um, is my Patrice, mic on? I don't know if you want to answer, uh, Peter. Can, can yep. you hear me? Okay. So um, yep. I just wanted to address that question that was thrown out about um, getting people onto uh, Mahara. We actually just upgraded our Mahara, and um, we're about to embark on trying to get uh, full-scale Pratt adoption of ePortfolio for people using it in their classes. But two of our divisions um, are using it, uh, using Mahara as uh, in, in different ways. We have a graduate library school, um, and they use uh, Mahara as a, an assessment tool at the final for the final degree. So all students, as they're studying, have to put together um, an e-portfolio that will then be looked at before they, they can receive their degree. And all, the um, departments work very hard in themselves. So, so SILS gets together its faculty, and they have, a, um, a, they have designed a requirement for their students. And then our intensive English program, which is somewhat like an English as a second language program, also has a very um, strong uh, departmental uh, dialogue and conversation about how they want their students to use the portfolio. So they then require their students, and everyone's sort of on the same page. They build template at the templates at the beginning of the semester for how their students' e-portfolio should look. Uh, I'd like to uh, reply to Peter the ideal ratio between the time, the faculty development and the just-in-time support? I don't know. In our institution, it's um, trying to get faculty in groups and learn. Once we have this physical space, it might happen, but it's very hard. And we mostly do the just in time, but then there is a follow up, and so, and then we ask faculty to uh, present in their brown bag lunches. So there's this continu continuity, but the the good ratio about these two, I I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you so much, Patricia and George. Um, really interesting work, and we uh, <laughs> we we have similar issues, challenges, and, and and also some successes too using students at, at pace. So we really appreciated your presentation. I don't know if there's other questions, or maybe we can continue the questions for them through the chat um, because there's one other topic we were hoping to get to today, and that's uh, usability of Mahara and trying to improve that. If that's okay with everybody. Hearing no objections? Okay. <laughs> Hearing no objections, we'll move on. Um, uh, just to give you a little background, we're in our fourth year of using Mahara and um, really um, doing pretty well with it overall, really enjoying it. But um, we have been noticing a, um, a trend of some, some pushback or discontent um, regarding the usability of Mahara. And of course, those of us that are deeply involved with it, we think it's great and very robust and does what we want it to do. But it's, it's a big obstacle if our new users log in and don't know where to go. And so we've been talking about this with, with some of you on the, you know, on the sides. We've been talking to Christina, and we met with Roger and the British Sam, as I'm calling her, <laughs> uh, earlier in the week. I work with a great Sam, too. It looks like Roger does as well. And um, 
you know, it, it, this seems to be a theme at other places. And so what I'm hoping we can do is work within this group uh, and other Mahara users to, um, to, yeah, we all do need a great Sam, that's true, um, to develop some ideas for how we could um, improve upon Mahara to make it as user-friendly as possible. I think we have just a one or two slides here to show you. We've, We've been doing surveys, um, having focus groups with faculty and students and staff. And so these um, quotes just show you, um, you know, some of the issues that are coming up, um, some of the things that our users are finding troublesome. I think the missing piece for us is the workflow. When students log in, um, they come to the tabs, and it's unclear where to go to actually begin. Um, I don't know if you want, you want to add anything. Okay. Feel free to, you know, add, join in by audio or chat if, if this is similar to uh, um, any issues you're facing. We'd, we'd be curious to hear that. And I should mention that um, we do tons of training and faculty development, so uh, we really feel like we couldn't do too much more there. We, at this point, we feel like the improvement really needs to be within the tool itself. And as we start to look at the landscape of web tools that are out there, web applications, we're just noticing there's a lot more white space, fewer words, a quick graphic, a quick tutorial or video, um, but then it's very clear. I think Roger said it very well earlier this week. Um, I'm paraphrasing, but he said when you come to a page, there should be kind of one clear action on that page, and, and I've been thinking about that a lot. I think that's something we need to try to develop. So, you know, as I mentioned, these are our current support efforts that you know, we're really doing very robustly. We've uh, trained over 100 faculty through our teaching circles over three years. Our e-turns, um, which are kind of our tech fellow equivalents, um, do hundreds of class presentations a year. We do lots of help through walk-ins, um, help desk. But all of this doesn't seem quite enough when the student sits down to create his or her portfolio sometimes. Um, in the last moments and um, doesn't know where, where to go. Uh, this, is, this slide shows you our current uh, ePortfolio, and if you want to, I'll write the link here. You can log in yourself. Um, sorry, I didn't make that a link. Oh, I guess I need the HTTP there. But you can log in there if you want to see for yourself. Um, we, right now we have a, a lot going on there, and we're trying to simplify. One of the things that we're, rec we're, trying, to, uh, <laughs> we're, we're trying to discuss um, among a small focus group here, and we'd like to get your input too, is we're trying to create those simple words that we see on other websites. And um, Roger, maybe you could share uh, through the chat the three kind of short phrases that you use. And of course, we're trying to build upon the standard ePortfolio, collect, select, and reflect, but make it even simpler for students that are not in the ePortfolio world. So we're, we're wrestling with terms such as collect, build, and share, or create, explore, and share. You know, basically, we're trying to convey something with the collection creation, and then something with the reflection thinking, analyzing, and then something with the sharing um, connecting, kind of permission changing. So we're looking for kind of three easy words or phrases that could help uh, our users understand what they're going to do. And Mahara, you know, we have this in our Mahara uh, area right now with the create and collect, organize, share, and network. And those graphics make a lot of sense to us, but we're afraid that to our users who are new to ePortfolio, um, it's, it's just not readily apparent what they should do. And yeah, I think Roger put his in there, get seen, get noticed, get that job. <laughs> and yeah, you, it's definitely employability focused, but it's very clear. A student's going to look at that and know exactly what they're going to do with that tool, and we think that clarity is very important, uh, and we're, we're looking for clarity. Yeah, do we have this next one, and did you put it in here, or you didn't? No. Okay. I wonder if, can I drag you it? You could share your screen. I don't think that's going to work. That's gonna, okay. I'm going to attempt to share the screen here. Um, oh, okay. Because I wanted to show you what we're... Okay. 
You'll have to let me know if this is working. Can you all see a mock-up of our ePortfolio page? Okay, great. Great. So this is, um, this is in draft. We're just kind of experimenting with building um, new buttons that would be much more direct and would be hyperlinks to actual tasks within Mahara. So even paring down from the three concepts to just the two, where create would take folks to perhaps the academic materials page or the introduction page. I think we talked about that. Uh, introduction page, and then the share would take them to the permission uh, changing page, because that's been a huge obstacle for us, that even students who make great portfolios often forget to change their permissions in the end, and we have some frustration from that as well. Now, for the students that know what they're doing, they wouldn't have to go this route. They could continue to change the portfolio and content tabs as normal, so we're not really looking to change um, anything uh, major, but we're just trying to make the workflow for the beginner user really much more direct. So I'd be curious to hear any of your comments on this, if this is an issue that you're facing at your institutions, or if you have any suggestions for us on ways we could make this clearer, trying to create buttons that link to uh, actual workplaces within Mahara to make it easier. We'll open it up. Anyone have any thoughts? Yeah, thank you. And of course, Christina, we'd love to, you know, hear if any any of this might be on the roadmap for future Mahara versions as well. Uh, Beth. Yeah. Uh, in, in you know, in addition to the workflow issues, I think when I work with with students and when I come into classes and so forth, um, there's a couple maybe more fundamental issues as well, just besides the confusion. And I put one into the chat. I mean, the idea of creating um, a portfolio page by assembling blocks or building blocks of stuff that you've collected earlier is, is not so much a, is, is not a natural way of thinking for a lot of the students that I work with. You know, they can, opening up a blank word processing page and starting to type, you know, that's one thing. But, a, you know, you can't just open up a portfolio page and start to type. You've got to think about, well, what do I actually have in my portfolio that I can bring down onto this page? And so, you know, just getting over that idea of, well, yes, you can by putting a text block in and so forth. But the idea that you know students have to think about, well, what have I collected uh, that I want to bring down onto my page is a different way of thinking uh, that, than most of them think about their stuff, I, I think. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I like to create and share. Um, I assume that the create has some takes them to a place where they they get some prods or s reminders to to reflect as well as just collect. So how does how does that work in in the workflow you're you're thinking about putting together? That's, I'm sorry, that's a great question. We're <laughs> yeah, we we don't know. I mean. Clearly, the reflection is the, is the key to this whole e-portfolio, and, and that may be the most abstract part. And we like to encourage students to use the journal feature for the reflect, but I feel like we're even trying to pare it down even more simply for just this just this right. basic startup. I mean, I almost imagine reflect being <laughs> kind of a, a grayed out link between the two, that between creating and sharing, that reflection would be happening. But we were really just trying to oversimplify this so we hear less of those comments that I shared on the first screen because we're afraid it, it's creating, I mean, even though our numbers, our adoption is increasing, this usability issue is creating a real roadblock for us among some users, so much so that if that some faculty, if they have too many of these us usability issues, then they just don't return to ePortfolio, you know, in a, in a subsequent semester. Right. So I feel like we've got to hurry up and address something even if it means kind of <laughs> um, simplifying some of what we believe are the core, <laughs> the core 
um, I don't know, the core beliefs of, the, of ePortfolio just to get our users back in there with confidence and then we can continue to educate about reflection and some of the more sophisticated elements that Mahara right. allows for. I mean, and the, the way you've got the workflow sh on, on this screen here where you're focusing on create and share, uh, that, that fits very naturally into the idea of as a student, well, I want to put my portfolio together because I want to showcase my stuff. Yeah. And, you know, you can do a lot of showcasing without the reflecting, and that might be what, you know, gets students feeling more comfortable and natural with the ePortfolio system. Yeah. Yeah, and just like Roger just posted, you know, once, some, once a faculty member is turned off to it, it, it is mm -hmm. so hard to turn them back around again. And we've, we've run into that in a few key areas, and it, it just... It becomes a, a re it's, it's much harder to convince someone to take a second look than to take a first look. And so yep. we want the first look to be so easy <laughs> that, you know, the second look and, you know, future um, uses of Mahara is just, you know, always a pleasant experience. I guess that's what we're, we're trying to make it. Um, um, Beth, just a quick question. Did you ask your users how they would like to create their portfolio, kind of what their ideal workflow would be, so that we have some more concrete ideas of, uh, or into which direction to go then with future development work. Yeah, well, we, you know, we have a, like an informal focus group that we've worked with this month that is, is comprised of faculty, students, and staff, and we focus more on the on the words and the layout. Uh, but I know even Sam and I differ a little bit on how we approach ePortfolio. Sam goes more to the the files and begins that way, and I go right to a page. So, you know, we're 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 a little unsure with with the best way to approach this. Um, there's a there's a lot of functionality with Mahara, but we we just want to make it easy for someone to get into. And I I think what we might hope to do to address what you're suggesting, Christina, is to maybe make this change and then run the focus groups this semester and get, try to get more detailed feedback as you're suggesting. So we can make further improvements, but we, you know, we don't want. To, I think we, we. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Finish your sentence, right? No, we, we know that we know the the challenges we create for ourselves if we make too many customizations. So we're really just trying to um, to streamline that and not make too many changes uh, because then we confuse people too, and then we we burden our programmers with more customizations to upgrade. So it's a balancing act. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it would be good to kind of ask, ask your users, students, and staff the questions that, um, that Keith brought up in terms of, okay, sit in front of a blank piece of paper, like, like in a Word document, in, con in contrast to pulling in building blocks, which way would they prefer to work, and things like that to go really more into these details than... Um, and, and really also figure out the distinction between create, organize, and share network, or what, where exactly the, the breaking points are, so that we can try to address those. Because in the past, we've already changed it, so that you don't, with a number of things, don't necessarily have to go to the content area of the portfolio, but can directly put things into your portfolio. And that's not just text boxes. It is also, it's also embedding videos or uploading files directly on the screen. But, and also being able to author a, a journal entry directly on the screen once you've put a journal into a page and things like that. So we've made improvements in that direction, but these might not be enough. And so kind of knowing how the users would like to work, what they would like to see in very more concrete terms, that would be really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. And that's not just page, but um, any any other institution where you have the possibility to talk to your users and really see what they would like to have. Yeah, I think we need to do more of that with our students, and every mm -hmm. semester we do a follow-up with the faculty that have gone to our teaching circle, so we could use those too. Yeah. Um, so we do have groups of people that we could definitely um, go to to ask more of those questions. A good suggestion. Beth, do you have uh, departments that are using the portfolio across the four years of the degree, for example. Because if we don't have that here yet, it's one one direction I'm thinking of. You know, you know, targeting specific departments to work with. And if 
if you've got department buy-in in that way, maybe you have focus on a very simplified workflow and idea of what the portfolio is in the freshman year, but you can approach the creating more complex and more reflective portfolios in a more developmental kind of process. Yeah. Yep, that's, no, that's a good idea too, Keith. We're, we're just starting to have e-portfolios required for our, all our English courses uh, on our Westchester campus, and we do have some grad programs that require it. Um, so we do have some okay. cohorts we could use for that kind of, uh, for that kind of review. Yep. But these are all good ideas and something I'm hoping we could continue to discuss in our Facebook group and with each other individually. It was great to meet up with Roger and Sam this week and hear that they're working on something similar. So perhaps we can all continue to work on it and make it easier for all of our, um, all of our schools to use Mahara. And I think, we're, I think we're getting close to the end of time. But if, again, yeah. it would be great to continue all these conversations and I think Keith, you'll usually make this recording available to those who may have may have missed this. Yeah, that should be um, um, well. Hopefully, later later today. Okay. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. It was great um, great getting to getting a chance to get together and exchange ideas. Um, we really enjoyed it, and um, be happy to follow up with anyone after today if anyone wants to help plan items for our next meeting, which I assume we'll try to plan for um, mid-spring or so. Yep. Sound good? Okay. I'm going to uh, stop the recording then. Okay. Bye. Thank Keith, Bye. thanks so much for everything you do to set, set us up with Adobe. We appreciate it. Anytime. I'm going to stop sharing.